Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today I'm going to show you how you can set up a keypad to control a solenoid lock or perhaps your garage door or any other electronic device where you want to use a password through the keypad to activate a relay. Now this little keypad here, it's a 4x4 matrix. You can find these on eBay, Amazon, uh, Banggood, DX, all kinds of different places. These are extremely common and normally you're going to find them for under a dollar. I think I paid 96 or 97 cents for this particular one and that was shipped to my house to boot. Um, the other things you're going to need, of course, is an Arduino board and a relay and a breadboard or um, a circuit board if you're going to solder it together. But um, this um, demonstration, we're just using a solderless breadboard. All right, uh, well, let me demonstrate it working here. And then we'll go over how it's set up and then we'll go over to the computer and take a look at the uh, the sketch on uh, how this is all controlled and a big thing about this compared to all the other videos I've seen a lot of them you could just sit and just keep cycling through the keys and just keep pushing and it's going to open the lock they don't have a reset thing and if you push the wrong button it doesn't reset the code it just keeps looking until the next proper key is pushed so if you just keep cycling through pushing them it's going to open the lock and that's stupid. I mean, why would you want to have that if you're doing using this? It's going to be some kind of security lock. Um, other ones I've seen on um, YouTube is if you put the correct code in and you hit the enter button and then you hit the enter button again, it's going to accept it because it stored the password. You entered it in, clear it. With the sketch I have come up with it takes care of all them problems if you put the wrong code in and hit the enter key it makes you start all over it ain't like just keep pushing and push a button pushing it, and eventually it's gonna open because you've eventually pushed all the keys no this is gonna make you restart and also if you do put the correct code in and i'll do it again i'm using one two three a then you hit stars, enter, and you see the green comes on. It means it opened, and the light on the relay turned on too. But if I push the star again, bam, no, because it reset. Completely reset. And that's the big advantage of this. And I've noticed on pretty much every video I looked at before I came up with this, it had some problem somewhere in it where there was a security issue I mean, somebody was going to get into it this is the best i've come up with so far but all right um let's take a look at how it's put together and um then we'll go over and look at the code and we'll go into that more on how that works so now of course first we have our little keypad and these are the most common ones you're going to find now to hook it to the um the uh solderless breadboard there's two ways you can do it. Um, I mean, you could use jumper wires, which is going to extend it, and possibly maybe you just want to extend it. But if you're only going a short distance, and now remember, where you have this keypad, you want this to be on the outside, and you want the circuitry to be on the inside of what's being locked so that they can't just um, open it up, get to the Arduino board, short it out, and open the lock. You want all of this on the inside of what's being locked in the keypad on the outside. Now what I did is I had some header pins and I had some angled ones too and I actually used the last of my angled ones so I can't show you but you can see on here how they're at the 90 degree angle. And I just snapped off some header pins and then soldered the short ends together <coughs> because the short ends aren't long enough to go into the breadboard or into the plug on the little keypad but the long ends are for both ends i just broke them off and soldered them together and that's how i made that little connector that goes um, to the breadboard otherwise another option um, you go on ebay amazon or wherever you buy your stuff and you can get a ribbon cable like this and as you can see it's got the header pins on there 
These are actually um, pressed stapled in. They work just as good as soldered. And this would extend it, and this also plugs right into the um, the breadboard and also plugs right into there because the header ends are long enough. Otherwise, like I said, you could just use um, regular jumper wires. But to make things nicer, I mean, you could use a ribbon cable or the headers. It just makes everything look a little nicer and neater. All right, with that, next, um, of course, we have the two LEDs. Now, these are optional. I decided to put them on because um, it lets you know if I put the wrong code in, the red one turns on. If I put the right code in, the green one turns on. Also on the relay, you can see that little LED right there turns on too. And then I just, um, I got them both run through the seam resistor to ground because only one's on at a time. It's saved on parts. Otherwise, the only other component we have is the relay. Um, this is a 5-volt activated relay, and this will handle um, 220 without a problem. Most likely, um, if you're using this to control a garage door opener, um, I think they're like 7 volts. If I remember right, it's been a while since I've actually worked on a garage door opener. If I remember right, they were like 7 volts, and it's going to be no problem to activate it. But this will, um, you can go up to 10 amps at 250 volts AC. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> this is going to work for almost anything. And um, all these components, um, if you're not sure where to get them, I will have a link um, in the description below to my website and um, for this project's page on my website and there will be links on there to where to find all these parts and what they are and what they're called so if you um, don't have one of these or looking to get one check out the website same thing we'll have the keypad on there arduino board and oh you don't have to use i'm using a nano you could use nuno mega pro mini heck i think a lily pad would probably even work with this but I'm using a Nano because they're nice and small. But, um, all right, well, that's how it's all assembled. And I will have a schematic, um, too, on uh, the website on how the uh, the keypad pins are hooked to the Arduino. So if you're curious about that um, as well, go to the website, and you'll find a schematic on there. It'll show you how to hook all this up and also the code we're going to be getting into in a minute. The Arduino sketch will be on there as well all right with that i think um we've talked enough and looked at this um i think we can go over to the computer and uh take a look at the arduino sketch itself oh i must have pushed it in wrong there we go all right um well, i'll fire up the computer and i'll catch you over there in just a second and we'll go through the sketch and how it all works and Hopefully it all makes sense to you. So I'll catch you there in just a moment. All right. I have the Arduino IDE opened up here. And I have the sketch loaded up. And like I mentioned earlier, um, if you would like to um, get a copy of this, just uh, look in the description below. And you'll find a link to this project's webpage. And you can go there and you can get this code. So you don't have to just type it in yourself. Now there is not much to this code that you're going to want to try to change. Um, most of it, the way it's set up, if you mess around with it, it's not going to work. But um, there are a couple things in here we're going to go over, like um, the password and how long that the, uh, the lock is activated, stuff like that. But a good chunk of this code you're going to want to just leave alone. But uh, we'll get into that in a moment. So let's just get right into this and get started. I'll just start with here at the very top. We're defining the lock, and that was the relay, or whatever you're trying to trigger once you put the proper password in. Now, I have mine set on digital pin 12. So if you use a different pin, of course, change this number here. And you can change the lock to whatever you want it to represent. But just remember, further down to change that as well. 
Um, next, we are including two libraries. We want the password.h and the keypad.h. If you don't have these libraries, once again, look in the description below and you'll find a link to my website and I'll have a, um, a link on there to where you can download these. I'll actually probably put both of them in one file because they are really small. And when I downloaded these, I think it took like 10 seconds for each one. So I'll put them both in one file that you can download so you get both of them if you need them. Otherwise, if you already have them, you don't have to download them. But yeah, just go to the website if you need them. Now next, what we have here, this is our password. And I was using 123A. Change this to whatever you want your password to be. You can use any of the letters and any of the numbers. Just don't use the star or pound key because the star and pound key are used for other things in, in the sketch. And it doesn't just have to be four numbers. I mean, it could be one number, two number, three, four. I do believe you could go like 20, 20 numbers if you wanted. I don't know if there's a limit on it. I haven't really tried that. The most I've ever done playing with this is I had six numbers in there and it worked fine. So I know at least six work, but I'm sure, I mean, you could do a really long password. Four is a nice, easy number to remember. That's why I just had yeah, it set up at four, but five, six, eight, ten, twenty, whatever you want to do. This right here is what you change right there. Whoops. Change that right there to what you want the password to be that when you put it on the keypad, it opens it. And remember, if you're using one of the letters, make sure you capitalize it on here. Otherwise, it's not going to work and you ain't going to recognize it. Now, the rest of this here, um, as long as you're using the same keypad I am, don't mess with any of this, period. If you are using a different keypad, there's other tutorials on uh, YouTube here, I've noticed there's lots of them on how to set this up itself. So I'm not going to go into that. Just check those out if you are using a different keypad. Otherwise, leave this the same. And also, um, to hook the keypad up, also on the website, I will have a schematic on there that will show you how to hook the keypad up, what order to put the pins, and uh, what pins to connect them to to the Arduino. So just leave all this alone unless you are going to be changing anything. And if you are, watch one of the other tutorials. Now next we get to the void setup. Um, we're just setting our pin mode for the lock, which was on pin 12 as an output. And then um, we're initiating the, the keypad basically so it knows, you know, to start looking for if a key is pressed. Next we got the void loop and that is just looking to see when a key is pressed it's getting it and then it um, goes into these other things that um, most of this we're going to skip through real quick um, the void keypad event don't mess with anything in here period the check password don't mess with anything right there um, the else statement here is just um, turning that uh, red LED on to tell you that the password was wrong. So if you didn't want to have that red LED in there, just comment or delete this little section out the else. Otherwise, leave all this alone. And what this is doing is it's checking to see if the password you entered is correct. And um, that's all there really is to it. Um, there ain't a whole lot to this program. Um... Oh, wait. Oh, I messed up there. Um, the evaluate. Yes, it's checking it. And what it's doing, um, I forgot to mention right here. This you might want to change. This is how long that it activates that once the password is correct, it activates how long you want it turned on. Now, for the demonstration, I had it at one second. If you're using this to trigger like your garage door opener, you're going to want like a quarter second maybe even a little less for the relay. Just got to click off and on real quick. So maybe put a 250 in there. If you were doing an electronic lock for like a door, a solenoid relay, um, maybe like four or five seconds. A lot of them um, solenoids, door lock solenoids, they um, have a maximum of like between five and 10 seconds. You don't want to leave them activated much more than that or they start to overheat and break down. 
But yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I almost forgot about that right there. But this is the only other thing that you, you want to change in this. And this just depends on what you're using this, this to activate. So it's right here, this little delay. Um, otherwise, leave everything else alone. And like I said, you can get rid of this else statement if you are not going to use that red LED to say that you put in the wrong password. Now, you could leave it in there. It ain't going to hurt nothing. It ain't hooked up. The uh, pin 13 on the Arduino board actually has a built-in LED on the board. So it just light up on the board. It ain't going to hurt nothing. All right. Um, really, isn't anything else to go over? I mean, there... It's not a real long sketch, but um, if you are a beginner, this there is some complicated stuff in here. We're using switches and cases and stuff like that. And that's why I didn't go into it, because if you really knew Arduino, you probably wouldn't be watching this tutorial. This is kind of for beginners to get started and help you, you know, do a, a little more advanced stuff without having to write all the programming yourself. So, all right, well, I would like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. If you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. So, uh, I hope you have a great day. And remember, have fun building.